the heavens are telling the glory of God, and the earth proclaims his handiwork. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Magnify the Lord with me and praise his holy name. Welcome, family and friends. I am the Reverend Dr. Redonia Thomas, pastor of Bethlehem and Laurel Creek United Methodist Church. We are one church in two locations, serving the community of Greenville, South Carolina. I do have a powerful word for you from the Lord today, and I invite you to turn with me to John chapter 2. John chapter 2, and I will begin reading at the 13th verse through the 22nd. Hear these words from the Lord. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and other and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for the house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it in, I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. Say, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we invite your presence in this moment, in this hour. Speak, Holy Spirit, to our hearts and our minds. Give us a heart to hear and receive and a mind to do what thus saith the word. I yield myself, Holy Spirit. Speak. Speak, heavenly dove, speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I've chosen for a title today, Jesus Shaking Things Up. Jesus Shaking Things Up. <clears throat> when I was a young girl, my mother would hand me a large jar of fresh milk and tell me to shake it. And I would shake that milk and shake that milk for what seemed like hours. But it wasn't long before it started to separate into small clumps. As I was shaking the milk, the small clumps grew larger until it was one massive clump of butter. My mother would then discard what was remaining and, and put the butter aside. The Hebrew writer said, what can be shaken will be shaken, so that what cannot be shaken will remain. If I have ever felt that God was in the midst of doing something major in my lifetime, I would have to say that it's the plague of COVID-19. This pandemic has shaken this nation to the core. The very foundation has been shaken. Sickness and death have overwhelmed us as a people and as a nation. Sanctuary doors have closed, leaving the people to feel cut off from God. 
our 45th president divided the country and was on the cusp of destroying our democracy. Insurrection and violence perpetrated on our U.S. Capitol like something unheard of in the United States of America. Don't tell me God is not shaking things up. Don't tell me that people are not stepping back to question their values, their faith, their behavior. Hey, God, the prophet said, yet once more, I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations. Friends, God is shaking things up. In our text, Jesus disrupts the time. He disrupts the day when he threw out the buyers and the sellers from God's house. They were making the temple courtyard a marketplace, selling the needed birds and animals for sacrifice, exchanging money so people would have the right currency to pay the tax required. Jesus' action got all up in their money. Oh, my friends, it was such a severe move that day. Commentaries say this is the reason the Jews put a mark on Jesus's head. Don't mess with people's money. But Jesus was making a point. He was shaking things up for a reason. A marketplace in the temple courtyard during Passover was not unheard of. This had been going on for years. Jesus's action shook the system right down to the very foundation. Why wouldn't the priest and the other leaders be upset? Why wouldn't they? And begin to consider how they might get rid of Jesus. Jesus was exercising too much authority. He was causing too much trouble in the temple challenging their system, messing with their money. Some people never want the system to be wrong or challenged, even when the system is unjust, even when the system is ungodly and unfair. Ray Charles tells of having to perform concerts during the days of segregation and Jim Crow laws. Back in the 50s, he was being led into a concert hall in Augusta, Georgia to perform a show. There were protesters gathered in the picket line outside the concert hall, protesting that the concert would be segregated. Only white people were allowed on the main dance floor. Black people had to sit in the balcony. When a, when a uh, protester got close to Ray and began chanting, no more segregation, no more segregation. Charles responded, look, man, there ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm an entertainer. He had been raised with institutional systemic racism all his life. He was playing a concert in the deep South. He was just one man. How could he change the system. But a few minutes later, Charles, Ray Charles, heard the white concert organizer insult the protester. And Charles knew deep in his heart that he needed to take action. He couldn't accept the injustice anymore. So he ordered his band to get back on the bus and leave Georgia. The concert organizer threatened to sue him. The state of Georgia banned him from making any public performances within state lines. Ray Charles no longer cared. He was going to stand up for equality and justice no matter what it cost him. 20 years later, in 1979, in one of those great reversals of history, Ray Charles was offered a public apology by the state legislature of Georgia, Georgia. And his rendition of Georgia on my mind was made the official state song. <laughs> oh, my friends, there was a shaking going on. 
There comes a time when we must challenge the system and shake things up. The slave trade in Great Britain came to an end because a deeply religious man named William Wilberforce became angry. He saw human beings treated like cattle, and he resolved that he would give his life to seeing that the practice, this practice, was obliterated from his homeland. There are some things, my friends, that ought to make you angry enough to challenge the system. My friends, there was a shaking going on with Wilberforce. How could William Wilberforce not get angry over slavery in his country? How could Dr. King not get angry over segregation in his land? How could Christians not get angry over some of the injustices that are committed in our country and around the globe? Injustices like hunger and poverty, hatred and violence, and the list goes on and on. Maybe the greatest sin that you and I commit is not getting angry, not challenging the institutional system of injustice that still exists in this world, not being willing to shake things up. The crowd didn't applaud when Jesus came in driving out the buyers and the sellers. They were baffled. They were confused by what Jesus did. The temple had become a symbol that divided Israel from other nations. If it were to become what God intended, a house of prayer for all nations, things would have to change. Walls would have to crumble. Things would have to be shaken up. And Jesus was doing just that. Just like our world today, things have gone too far. People are using church as a cover for their evil deeds, as a cover to do injustice and perpetrate their lies. Jesus challenged the injustice. He challenged them for allowing the temple to become a safe hiding place where people sought forgiveness and fellowship with God no matter how they acted on the outside. This whole process of sacrificial ritual gave people a sense of security. The animals were laid out and burned at the altar and people felt like their sins were forgiven and they could just go on and live the way they wanted to live. See, it, it was like seeking forgiveness over and over but not turning away from sin. Many seek God's grace today and forgiveness only to continue living a lifestyle of sin with no plans whatsoever to repent or to change their lifestyle. Jesus was challenging the people and the system. Reflect on their faith and their behavior. Jesus was shaking things up so that people could reflect. Reflect on their values. Reflect on their faith and their behavior. Oh, my friends, you see, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day of accountability. And now is the day. Now is the time during Lent to reflect on our life and get right with God. Jesus is shaking things up today. My friends, Jesus paid it all when he went to the cross. When he died and rose again after three days. When Jesus spoke of destroying the temple and raising it up again in three days. No one understood what he was speaking of. No one understood that he was talking about his death and the resurrection. Left a crimson stain. Oh, but God. <laughs> Jesus washed it white as snow. Jesus's action that day marked the beginning of changing the system, of challenging injustice and bringing about a new redemption plan. The shaking up Jesus did was radical. So 
was going to the cross. So was dying for all people. These are radical things. It was a high price to pay for our salvation, for change. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad Jesus is shaking things up. It doesn't feel good, but it has caused me and it has caused many others to reflect on our life, to reflect on our values, to reflect on our faith and our behavior. Oh, God loves us too much to not shake us to our senses, to not seek change in this generation. God loves us too much to not challenge the system and shape the foundation of this world. Oh, brothers and sisters, God loves us too much to not shake things up, to make us a better people for him and for this world. Oh, I pray that you would ask yourself the question today. Did that shaking cause you to think about your relationship with God? Did that shaking impact your life? What we're going through right now with COVID, the shaking of the foundation of the world, has it caused you to reflect on your relationship with Jesus Christ? I pray it does. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Let us pray. God, in the midst of all these challenges that we're facing today, help us to trust you. Help us not to be afraid of the shaking, but to take this opportunity to get right with others and to get right with God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, dear God, for your word. Now cause the anointing to flow and break every bondage and yoke. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I don't know about you or your relationship with God today, but I do know that he knows you. He knows your name. And today is as good as any day to repent and give your life to Christ. My friends, the ball is in your court. Jesus is waiting to hear from you. Why don't you call on him today? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Now for our closing prayer. Let us part in the love of God, the grace and the mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit of the Lord rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that this word was encouraging and it strengthens your heart. We come every week to bring you a fresh word from the Lord. I pray that you will go forth encouraged in God's word. My friends, I want to thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support financial support. I want to thank you and I pray that God will multiply the gifts you've sown into this ministry. He will multiply them back to you. Thank you again so much for joining us. Please remember to be safe, be vaccinated when the time comes, wear your mask, keep your distance, and know that God loves you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until next time.